This review is brought to you by DwayneWright.com, FileMaker Framework Solutions, virtual one-on-one FileMaker training, consulting, and custom design services. For more information, please visit www.DwayneWright.com. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne, and I just wanted to do a quick movie on an experiment that I'm working with, and that would be converting my in-business money application to work with uh, FileMaker Go on the iPad. And some of the different things that I'm coming across as I'm doing that. And it's not a big pressing issue, it's just really getting more of an experiment. But one of the things I did was I I opened up the user interface to have bigger buttons so that you would have um, less chance of clicking things wrong with the iPad. I've noticed that kind of UI, I've read that. So if we go into the finance ledger, you can see it looks a lot different than the ledger that I had before. It's, you know, more Fisher Price like, um, bigger buttons, that type of thing. And one of the things I had in there is that when you went ahead and clicked on one of the icons in a new window, it came up with the details of that transaction in a new layout, and then you would make your changes and then click submit. Now, with the iPad, it doesn't support the uh, ability to have multiple windows uh, layered on top of each other with FileMaker Go. So, I still wanted to retain that experience for the FileMaker desktop user, but in the FileMaker Go user, I wanted to go ahead and just have it go to a, the, the regular layout and back. So, what you have to do is you have to branch this script so that instead of it opening up the new window, uh, it goes to that window, and then branch when you click the submit, then instead of closing the window, it just goes back to the original layout. So if we go ahead and just go ahead and turn on the script debugger here, and we'll bring that over onto our screen, and we'll go ahead and click on our icon, pull it up, and what I've done here is, and this was, I created this back before FileMaker script had, um, script environment had folders, so I would tend to put a lot of scripts inside of one script and then break them up with script parameters. And uh, that may be something that I change as well. But anyway, what happens is when you click on this button, it pulls a script that contains a lot of different actions and passes a parameter. And in this case, we have a regular view transaction. And you can see what I'm doing is the get system platform equals three that's what's returned when you're using the uh, iPad versus, you know, one or two if you're using a uh, Macintosh or a Windows machine um, to, oh, using with FileMaker, and you have some variances there. So the only thing I've done there is that when you're on the iPad, matter of fact, let's just open up that script and move that out of the way. So when you're opening up with the, the iPad, when I go to the related records, I've unchecked the show in a, a you know new window. It just goes to that layout. But if you are using FileMaker on a regular desktop machine, then we're bringing that up into a new window. And then again, in the same script, if we go down a little ways, here you can click see where you click the submit button, and it's the same thing. If I'm detecting that if you have an iPad, that actually should be up here. Um, you know, I'm detecting that if you're using an iPad, it goes back to the original layout. If you're using the regular uh, client, it just closes it. So, let's take a look and see how that works. So, let's go ahead and see how it looks like um, on the iPad with FMP Go. So, we'll go ahead and launch FileMaker, open up our in business money application. And then we'll go ahead and open up our finance ledger. And then we're going to go in and see one of the transactions. And there you can see it comes out okay. And if we hit submit, it goes back down. Um, very nice and very cleanly. And that's one way to get around the uh, inability for the FMP Go and the iPad to show multiple windows overlaid on top of each other. 
Now, I'm still working with the UI, and I did notice one change that I do need to make. Uh, uh, one of many. Let's go ahead and bring up the movie. We pan in. Okay, so you can see the transaction has come up, and it's still editable. But if I were to click into a field, the iPad keyboard is going to take up most of the screen. So if I wanted to keep the same layout, the user is going to have to flip the iPad into a portrait view. And then this will fit fine at the top, and then you'd have enough room for the keyboard at the bottom. And so I don't imagine somebody's going to be doing a lot of data entry via the iPad, but that flipping aerobics back and forth of, you know, portrait to landscape, portrait to landscape, if they do that quite a bit, uh, they may get a little annoyed. And that's something that I just have to uh, find out a way to work through. But anyway, that was a quick little movie just showing you how to uh, adjust the windowing environment for uh, an FMP Go user. And so far, the most I've uh, used the FMP Go in actual coding and stuff is probably just maybe four or five hours read up on it probably twice as much as that but uh, so far I'd have to say it's a very very impressive product. Do you have questions or comments about the video you just saw? Please feel free to email me at info at Thank you.